Hello friends. Today we are going to carry out the experiment based on fluid mechanics. The experiment is known as free and forced vertex flow. Before starting this experiment, we must know the aim behind this experiment. So friends, the aim of this experiment is to obtain the surface profile of free and forced vertex. Friends, as the experiment is based on free and forced vertex flow, so before proceeding further, let us understand the term vortex. So, what is a vortex? In terms of fluid mechanics, a vortex is a spinning, often turbulent flow of fluid. Any spiral motion with closed streamlines is a vortex flow. The motion of fluid swirling rapidly around a center is known as a vortex. When a liquid contained in a cylindrical vessel is given the rotation, surface of water no longer remains horizontal but it depresses at the center and rises near the walls of the vessel. A rotating mass of fluid is called vortex and motion of rotating mass of fluid is vortex motion. Vortices are of two types which is forced vortex and free vortex. When a cylinder is in rotation then a vortex is called forced vortex. If water enters a stationary cylinder, then a vortex is called free vortex. Friends, before carrying out this experiment, let us understand the apparatus and its working. The apparatus consists of perspex cylinder which drain at center of bottom. The cylinder is fixed over a rotating platform which can be rotated with the help of a DC motor at different speeds. A tangential water supply rip is provided with flow control valve. The whole unit is mounted over the main frame. Water is supplied by a pump. Exit orifice of different size are provided which can be easily replaced. Starting from the bottom portion, let us first take the tank which is called as shump tank. Friends, this is the tank which can be called also as a small reservoir. It is known as a small reservoir because the water is collected in this tank and also it is circulated through this experiment. Now, as you can see, the water from the sump tank passes through the pipeline with the help of the pump. Here, the another pipeline is provided in order to adjust and regulate the flow of water which enters into the cylinder and the rest is discharged back to the tank. Now, the water passes through the transparent tube through a valve into the cylinder. Here the transparent tube from where the water is flowing into the cylinder is adjusted tangentially because to avoid the disturbance and turbulence in the vortex formation. Here above the cylinder two scales are provided to take different readings at different location of the vortex. Among them one scale is kept vertical which measures the depth and the other one is horizontal which measures the radial distance. The knob in center is rotated to adjust the pointer which touches the surface of water. Below the cylinder inside the box a DC motor is placed with a gear mechanism to give a circular motion 
to the cylinder in forced vortex. The DC motor is regulated with the help of a variable transformer in order to vary different speeds by changing the voltage. Now the water from this cylinder discharges into the measuring tank through the pipe where we can measure the flow rate for a specific volume at a specific time. And lastly water finally reaches to the sump tank through a pipeline. Here we have to generate a forced vertex with the help of a rotating cylinder. The cylinder is being rotated by a motor. The rotational speed of the cylinder is altered with the help of a gear mechanism and the depth of the vortex, vortex is increased by increasing the speed of the cylinder. The profile of the forced vortex is parabolic. To measure the depth of the vortex we use a pointer. By lowering the pointer to the bottommost point we measure the depth with the help of the vertical scale and the radius by horizontal scale. Readings are recorded as shown in the video by lowering the pointer tip till it touches the surface of the water and then note down the readings of vertical and horizontal scale respectively. Now as per the readings fill up the observation table and calculate the angular velocity as per the given formula. Here Z is the distance between the initial water level and final vortex level. From these values plot the coordinates and the profile of graph will be like this. Now to measure the discharge of a specific volume of water open the valve between the cylinder and the measuring tank which allows the water to get fill in the measuring tank and note down the reading up to 2.5 liters. Also note down the time required to get fill 2.5 liter. Now calculate the discharge as shown in the sample calculation. Now for free vortex stop the motor so that the cylinder will not rotate and the water will discharge by itself from the orifice creating free vortex as shown. Note that before taking the readings please make sure the flow is steady. If not then adjust the valve and make the flow steady. Now note down the readings same as forced vortex and fill up the observation table and plot the coordinates on the graph. Friends, let us understand the precautions to be taken while carrying out this experiment. While doing the experiment, forced vortex, see that water does not spill away from the vessel. Do not increase the speed of rotation excessively. Do not start pump for forced vortex experiment. Friends, after learning about the vortex, you must be wondering what are the applications and occurrences of vortex in nature. The concept of vortex is applicable in the creation of tsunami, cyclones, tornado, whirlpools and also apart from this it is also used in purification of air as a cyclone separator in industries. Thus by this experiment we can conclude that the surface profile for vortex is obtained by plotting the graph between radius and height of the vortex formation which can make us understand the nature of the vortex.